Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. API 579 ASME FSS one is a key part of any asset integrity management program. In this presentation, we will go through the 2016 edition and uh, we'll review the intent and the scope, the jurisdictional requirements, and in this case, we'll use Alberta, but we won't be going through any specific insurance requirements because I, I simply haven't run across that in, in my work because the, the places I worked were, were self-insured. Uh, FSS applications, the, that um, we'll talk about the applications for where it's applied, the limitations of use, where the restrictions are, talk about something called expiry conditions. And these FSS, these three FSS application limitations of use, expiry conditions, they're sort of a clarification by the local authority, which is the jurisdiction. And in our case, uh, I'm gonna give Alberta, Canada as the, um, as a sort of a base condition, because it, there's, of course, there's many jurisdictions talk about responsibilities and uh, qualifications, and we'll wrap it up with some definitions. Now, if we look at the, the, the forward content, we can, in the, in the standard, you're going to, there's a section that sort of outlines the intent of of the standard. The intent is for safety um, and proof safety by you know, equipment integrity, optimizing maintenance and operation, maintain availability of equipment so that you know equipment doesn't go down ex unexpectedly, and long-term economic assessment, just determining you know how much life's remaining in equipment and determining you know, the value of, of the plant. API RP579 was written in conjunction with other refining and petrochemical industry codes for pressure vessels, piping, and above ground storage tanks. And as such, the equipment that's being assessed must also be equipment that is listed in the specification. So you can't go, if the, if the equipment's not designed to that spec, then you can't base the assessment on that spec. And there are, there, these, the, the API 579 is meant to supplement and augment. The local jurisdiction tends to also have supplementary requirements to to fill in the holes and if you want to see more details table 1.1 in part one has the has all the standards the recommended practices and the uh, technical requirements that are applicable for use as a basis for doing the evaluation Now let's go through jurisdictions. Uh, one needs to be aware of compliance of with the local jurisdictions for pressurized components. Um, I'm not sure whether this is for all jurisdictions, but the jurisdictions that I've worked with, you don't have to refer to the local technical authority. In the case of Alberta, uh, we have the pressure equipment and safety regulation. And they have written a sort of a roadmap of the requirements for alteration and design registration based on fitness for service. So um, this is a supplement too. 
and of course the local codes take dominant over over uh, the API standards so this is very important and to go through and there's uh, so the fitness of service assessment procedures uh, are used to justify continued pressure equipment that has been damaged or in service it specifies requirements that must be met and comply with section 40 of the Alberta Code and the pressure equipment's uh, safety regulation for registration of an of an alterate alternation design based on fitness for service assessment. So there's a number of forms that you can fill out uh, that are required. Um, APSA AB 513, uh, AB 521, uh, and uh, API, what's oh, our ABA, APSA, AB 506, and of course the one shown here is AB 535. 535 is sort of the, the main one, and uh, it's it's quite recent uh, at the time of this. So, but it's a, it's a it's you have to read this document in, in this jurisdiction. Applications. The local jurisdiction will require a valid reason why the assessment was is to be done and why can't rep uh, performing repairs or simply rereading be done they will you'll have to justify an acceptable service interval for that equipment and the owner has to accept the responsibility for that and there, the risk of operating the damaged equipment has to be evaluated by that owner uh, and to be acceptable. And they have to have a risk management and safe operation plan in place before um, implementing this plan. And they must have documentation and monitoring. So it says, the fitness for service assessment shall include a specified and predetermined date for the permanent resolution of the flaw effect and it should provide a detailed monitoring and risk management plan to ensure continued safe operation. The monitoring plan shall define all pertinent variables and correspondence acceptance criterion. The owner has must have a detailed documentation record keeping systems maintenance monitoring programs and all other required act activities to ensure safe and continued operation of equipment and of course if they start changing the process then this procedure is really not valid limitations of use the local authority will often specify exactly what the limitations for use are for the jurisdiction of Alberta. The, the limitations are as follows. It's not applicable for public occupancy service. It's not applicable for pressure relief devices. New construction is not applicable. It's not applicable for operating equipment. Expiry conditions. When FS FFS alteration design registration includes acceptance for a limited predefined period of time. The registration expires when any of the following apply. When you have a predefined period for operation has elapsed, the monitoring variable has become out, out of the specification of the calculation limits, and a very monitored variable would be for example, um, thickness, crack depth, and it's outside of the criterion, so therefore it's expired. New conditions have occurred or have changed, will change, and that will expire it as well. Note also that if the equipment has been sold, relocated, or re-rated, then the, this also is uh, expired as well. Owner responsibilities. The owner has an overall responsibility for the fitness for service program, the requirements 
to be met by the jurisdictional authority and for the insurance companies. The owners have to ensure that the results of the assessment are, are documented, filed in appropriate manner with the records. They have to understand uh, the extent of the damage and this is performed by means of a risk assessment. The local authority of, a, of the jurisdiction of Alberta requires a risk assessment. They require the documentation for the risk assessment. And so uh, the owner has to have a comprehensive and systematic process for evaluating all potential risks to people, environment, property, that may be affect as a result of appropriate pressure equipment. The following questions should be considered when doing a risk assessment. How are or will the operating conditions be met and controlled? Which operating transients occur in the past? And how have they affected the damage mechanisms? How, how many potential failure of other equipment will affect them the normal operation of the pressure equipment in question. How will the owner address the responsibility of establishing a criterion for retiring pressure equipment? What are the permanent resolution plans? So they have, at the end of the day, the owner must uh, is accepts the risks for continued operation. responsibilities for the inspector. The inspector must determine the inspection and testing requirements. So they must work in conjunction with the NDE examiners to, uh, to determine the, the plan, the inspection and test plan, the plan for getting the inspection results required. They have to ensure that they have provide all the necessary data for the assessment. They have to ensure its completeness and accuracy. You know, the equipment's been calibrated to do the testing and so on. And um, officially they have, uh, they can do a level one assessment as determined by the owner. Um, but the, the, the specification also says recommends that the the um, FFS engineer uh, provides a check. Responsibility of the engineer performing the assessment. The engineer is responsible for the assessment, documentation, and resulting recommendations. The exception is level one may be performed by an inspector, a non-degreed specialist, but reviewed by the by the engineer. And uh, that, of course, um, is also um, up to the owner and to the jurisdiction as well at the end of the day. The FS, FFS engineer must implement the following engineering disciplines in their study. Materials and metallurgy, mechanical and structural inspection, fracture mechanics knowledge, NDE examination, and must understand the process. The responsibilities of the plant engineer. The engineer must be knowledgeable about the equipment that's being the assessments being performed and they act typically as the owner designate so they carry the owner responsibilities and they may perform a level one and two assessments as per the um, the standard now the local authority has added responsibilities as per the legislation of the province or state of the jurisdiction. And their responsibilities is specify the applications and limits 
for the fitness for service evaluations. And they do that with the documentation that we saw earlier. They must review and approve um, th these submissions. And of course, their mandate is always for public safety. The specification also go, undergoes some discussions about qualifications of the owner user. They have to understand their process. They have to understand the equipment, the specific equipment requiring the assessment. They have to understand the consequences and they have to take responsibility for the overall plan and for the remedial actions. They have to be aware of the jurisdictional requirements and follow those. And if insurance is involved, then is what the insurance issues also. Qualifications inspectors. Inspectors by the standard have to be qualified and certified to post construction specs per the applicable requirements. So examples would be API 510, API 570, API 653 for tanks, and NB23. NDE personnel must have a minimum of an a level two ASNT or, or an equivalent standard. The inspector must be experienced in inspecting and assessing that uh, particular piece of equipment. And the, they must be aware of the jurisdictional requirements. And there are additional uh, jurisdictional requirements as well for inspectors. Qualifications for the engineer. The engineer must be competent to perform the level of assessment required, says that plainly. And as we alluded to earlier under, under requirements, they must be have a broad range of experience in, in process, the equipment pressure vessel codes and the applicable codes. And they must know fracture mechanics and failure modes, and they must know the NDE, and they must be able to pull all that together. Uh, the engineer must be registered with uh, the, the jurisdiction, and the owner user uh, supplemental requirements have to be met. There are times when there's other requirements from the insurance company and so on. So those have to be adhered to the jurisdiction. It, Within that jurisdiction, a little bit more detail, they, um, they require that the, the work assessments are staffed by a professional engineer and the jurisdiction, there's um, the organization or the company that the, the, the engineer belongs to must be registered to do that kind of work as well. Definitions and glossaries, part one, gets into this discussion about definitions, important when writing reports, and they refer to an Annex I for a glossary of terms. They include things like, you know, what is an alteration? And of course, they refer, they supplement that, that with what, you know, API 510 says, a piping systems, you know, 570 and storage tanks, API 653. And the, and also look at the jurisdictional supplementary glossary terms as well. They, of course, take jurisdiction takes precedent and they have their own terms as well. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos and we'd love to hear from you maybe we can do some business please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing take care for now